The following glossary of terms are those used commonly within the clan society. The language of the clans is based on what is known as Star League Standard English, but many words have been adapted that are unique to their culture. Some were taken by the Kerenskys from the Russian language and military terminology. All these words represent the Kerenskys' efforts to express concepts they felt were lacking in standard Star League English. The following list includes terms used by the Warrior cast and other useful explanations of clan concepts. It's not an exhaustive list and doesn't reflect the many differences in terminology that exist between the various clans. Trial of Abjuration When a problem within a caste or clan can be resolved by no other process, the troublesome element may be ejected from the society through a trial of abjuration. The target of the ritual is stripped of rank and caste, which places him or her outside clan law, and is usually forcibly ejected from clan territory. Members of the clans may no longer even speak the name of the abjured member or clan, and in the case of warriors, their genetic material is purged from the pool. A clan also may abjure a warrior for negligence of duty or conduct on becoming of a warrior. The results of a trial of abjuration may be overturned by the clan council that enacted it, or by the grand council. Abtaka A warrior adopted into the warrior caste of the clan that captured him or her is known as Abtaka. Trial of Annihilation, the ultimate punishment in clan society. The Trial of Annihilation calls for the destruction of the accused. Such trials may be carried out only following a unanimous vote of the clan or grand council, and may be invoked only for the most heinous crimes. Such sanctions have been declared against individuals, stars, and clusters, and once were used against an entire clan. Everything associated with the target, possessions, genetic material, and descendants is destroyed and no member of any clan may speak the names of those annihilated. Bachal The Bachal is the ritual by which clan warriors issue combat challenges. Though the challenge may take many forms, in most cases, the Bachal begins with the attacker identifying himself, announcing the trial, and requesting to know what forces stand against him. The defender must reveal the forces they intend to use in the trial, and may also choose the site of battle. The defender also has the right to ask the attacker to ante up a prize of equal value against the possibility the defender wins, though the challenge party rarely takes advantage of this. When the Bachal is complete, the attacking and defending units bid amongst themselves to determine who will participate. The sub-commander who bids lowest wins the right and responsibility of the battle, a practice that minimises losses. Because Innisfear troops regularly use deception and other tactics the clans consider dishonourable, many clans abandon the Bachal when fighting Innisfear foes. Blood Count The blood count is the number of active blood rites associated with a blood name, and thus the number of individuals who may use it. Traditionally, this number is 25, but in cases of inferior blood names, the count may be as few as 5. The process for reducing a blood count is known as reaving, and the process for increasing it is called propagation. A blood count may also be produced by abjuration, or by an ill Khan's decree. Blood Name A blood name is the surname associated with a blood rite, descended from one of the 800 warriors who stood with Nicholas Kerensky to form the clans. A warrior must win the use of a blood name in a trial of blood rite. Only blood name warriors may sit on clan councils or hold the post of lawmaster. Khan or Il Khan, and only the genetic material from the blood named is used in the warrior caste eugenics program. Blood Name House The warriors who bear or are eligible to bear a particular blood name form a Blood Name House. The house acts as a substitute family for the warriors and exerts considerable political influence within the clans. In some, most notably the Fire Mandrel Kindras and the Cloud Cobra Clusters, groups of blood name houses band together to form larger, more powerful associations. After the first generation, blood names are matrilineal, so a warrior may claim membership of only one blood name house. Blood Heritage The history of the blood name warriors of a specific blood rite is known as a blood heritage. Blood rite is a specific lineage of a blood name known as a blood rite. Unlike the conventional clan blood name lineage, the members of a blood rite need not be directly related to each other, only to the original founder of the blood name. Each blood name may consist of up to 25 blood rites. Trial of Blood Rite The Trial of Blood Rite is a series of one-on-one -on -one single elimination duels fought by warriors to win possession of a blood name. Each competition consists of 32 entrants, the majority of which are nominated by the existing blood name warriors of the house. 
the head of the house, or lawmaster, nominates all but one of the remaining entrants, and the 32nd is filled by the winner of a grand melee. Bond Cord The woven bracelet worn by bondsmen is known as a bond cord. Warrior cast bondsmen wear a three-strand bond cord on their right wrist, with the colour and patterning of the cord signifying the clan and unit responsible for the warrior's capture. The cords represent integrity, fidelity and prowess. The bond holder may cut each strand as he or she feels the bondsman demonstrates the associated quality. According to tradition, when the final cord is severed, the bondsman is considered a free member of his or her new clan and adopted into the warrior caste. Each clan follows this tradition to varying degrees. For example, Clan Wolf accepts nearly all worthy individuals regardless of their past, while Smoke Jaguar generally chooses to adopt only Trueborns. Bondholder this is the individual, traditionally the member of the warrior caste, responsible for the bondsman's capture, to whom the bondsman belongs. The clan considers the bondholder responsible for the actions, education, and punishment of the bondsman. A bondsman is a prisoner who is held in indentured servitude until released or accepted into the clan. Most often, bondsmen are captured warriors who fulfill roles in the labourer or technician castes. Their status is represented by a woven bond cord, and they're obliged by honour and tradition to work for their captors to the best of their abilities. Bondsreth. This is the ritual by which a warrior avoids the fate of a bondsman called a bondsreth. Because the clan is considered escaping after being captured dishonourable, bondsreth allows the warrior to die before being given a bond cord, either by suicide or at the hands of an accomplice. Performing the ritual of bondsreth after receiving a cord is considered cowardly and dishonourable unless the bondholder gives his or her permission. Brian Cash A Brian Cash is a clan equipment store, usually one established during the demobilisation process Kerensky created upon arriving in the Pentagon. The name is derived from the style the Castle Brian Fortresses. Canister, a slang word used for artificial wombs. Canisterborn is slang for the artificial breeding elements of the eugenics programme of the Trueborn Warriors that results from this process. Cast. The clans are divided into five castes, warrior, scientist, merchant, technician, and labourer, in descending order of influence. Each have many sub-castes based on specialised skills. The warrior caste is largely the product of the artificial breeding programme. Those candidates who fail their trial of position are assigned to the scientist or technician caste, giving those castes a significant concentration of trueborn members. Most of the civilian castes are the results of scientists decreed arranged marriages within the castes. The children of all castes undergo intensive scrutiny during their schooling to determine the caste for which they are best suited. Though most end up in the same caste as their parents, this process allows children born to members of civilian castes to enter training to become warriors, though they belong to less prestigious ranks of the freeborn. Chalkas. Someone or something that challenges the clan caste system is known as a Chalkas. Circle of Equals. The area in which a trial takes place is known as the Circle of Equals. It ranges in size from a few dozen feet for personal combat to tens of miles for large-scale trials. Though traditionally a circle, the area can be any shape. Cloisters. These are the political military factions of Clan Cloud Cobra, organised around their religious beliefs. Codex. Most often worn as a bracelet, a codex is a warrior's ID and service record. It includes details of their bloodline, their house and generation, as well as an electronic representation of their DNA for ID purposes. Contract. The clan definition of a contract denotes an agreement between two commanders by which one officer may include the troops of another in his or her bidding. Usually agreed upon between clusters or galaxies, these are occasionally undertaken between entire clans. Kuragan, the personal aid to a star colonel or garrison commander. Crusader, a clansman who espouses the invasion of the Innisfer and the re-establishment of the Star League by military force. Most Crusaders are contemptuous of the people of the Inner Sphere, whom they view as barbarians, and of freeborns within their own clans as well. Cut down. This is accepted minimum force necessary to win a trial. Bidders who force their opponents below the cut down are considered clever, while those who win trials with forces below the cut down receive great honour. Desgra. Any disgraced individual or unit is known as Desgra. Disgrace may come through refusing orders failing in an assigned task, acting dishonourably, or demonstrating cowardice. Ekan. 
the leader of a clan Cloud Cobra Cloister is known as an Ekan. Elemental. The large, muscular infantry derived from the clan artificial breeding program are called Elementals. Their battle armor suits are also referred to as such. Enhanced Imaging. EI refers to implanted neurocircuitry that allows a mech warrior or aerospace pilot to better control his or her machine. Though these implants greatly enhance a warrior's reaction time, evidence suggests that the equipment eventually causes paranoia and outright madness. Eugenics Program The clans believe strongly in the principles of eugenics, the improvement of the population by controlled breeding. The clans implemented such a program along two distinct strands. The warrior caste uses an artificial breeding program based on genetic engineering and incubation in artificial wombs in order to create the ultimate warriors. In the civilian castes, a system of mandatory arranged marriages provides a similar but less technical means of advancement. According to strict definition, both of these methods may be called eugenics, but within the clans, only the artificial breeding is commonly referred to as such. The founder is a reference for Nicholas Kerensky. Freebirth is a clan epithet used by Trueborn members of the warrior caste to express disgust or frustration. For one, Trueborn to use their curse to refer to another Trueborn is considered a mortal insult. Freeborn, an individual conceived and born by natural means, is referred to as a Freeborn. Its emphasis on the artificial breeding program causes clan society to view such individuals as second class. Gift take refers to the sample of DNA taken from a warrior who died with great glory in combat. Grand Council. This is the body responsible for governing the clans as a whole. It consists of the assembly of Khans, two from each clan, as well as the Ill Khan, if one exists. Its authority covers any matters involving more than one clan, and it also determines general policy for Kerensky's descendants. The Grand Council serves as the highest court of the clans. The Great Father. This is the name used for Nicholas Kerensky's father, Alexander, the general who led the SLDF into exile. Trial of Grievance. This is used to settle disputes between two parties. The victor in the match is deemed to be in the right. Often, such trials are fought over points of honour, and often to the death. Hegira. This is the right by which a defeated foe may withdraw from the field of battle without further combat, and with no further loss of honour. Ungard. This turn refers to the honour guard assigned to escort a gift take to a genetic repository. Ilchi. The ambassador messengers whom Clan Blood Spirit assigns to its allies are called Il Chi. Il Khan is the war leader of the clans, elected from the members of the council. He or she also serves as arbiter between clans in times of crisis, acting with the power of the Grand Council. The Il Khan enjoys wide ranging power in military matters, but not absolute. The Il Khan answers to the Grand Council, and his authority is limited to those matters ordinarily belonging to the Grand Council. The Ilkhan normally may not interfere in events deemed internal to a clan, but when the martial code is in effect, they operate largely unhindered. Inquisitor. An Inquisitor is the official assigned to advance the prosecution's case at any clan legal trial. Isola, the spoils of battle, including bondsmen, claimed by victorious warriors, is always called Isola. Keshik. The Keshiks comprise a combination bodyguard and command unit, usually serving a Khan. Traditionally, a Khan uh, commands a Keshik, but in practice a Star Colonel oversees day-to-day -day matters. Keshiks range from trinary to cluster size. Khan, or Kakan and Sarkhan. Each clan council elects two of its number as Khans. These serve as rulers of the clan and its representatives on the Grand Council. Traditionally, these individuals are the best warriors in the clan, but in practice, many instead elect their most skilled politicians. The senior Khan, sometimes referred to as the Kakan, acts as the head of the clan, overseeing relationships between castes and clans. The junior Khan, known as the Sarkhan, acts as the clan's warlord. The senior Khan decides the exact distribution of tasks, and may assign the Sarkhan additional or different duties. The term Kakan is considered archaic though, and is rarely used. Kindra. This is a political military faction within clan Firemandral, composed of more one or more blood-named houses. Kurultai. It's a clan war council. A Grand Kurultai is a war council involving all the clans. Traditionally, Grand Kurultai are held in the Hall of the Khans on Stranameshti and may be convened only by the petition of three or more clans. An Il Khan may call a Grand Kurultai at any time or place. Lawmaster. The Lawmaster is the keeper of clan laws and history. 
He or she plays a key role in investigations and trials, and is the only individual allowed to take action against active Khans. Unlike the Khans, who are nominally above the political infighting in the Grand Council, the Lawmaster can take a proactive role in any inquiries and trials, acting as either advocate or inquisitor. Traditionally, however, the Lawmaster does not vote on issues save in the event of a tie, at which point his vote decides. The position grants considerable political power, encompassing the equivalent of several more familiar minor roles such as High Bailiff, responsible for issuing writs and summons, the Provost Marshal, head of the Clan Police, and Adjutant General, Chief Administrator. The Lawmaster also oversees any trials resulting from Clan Council decisions, and is the final arbiter in such disputes. Further, it is the only post within the clans to able authorise any internal investigation without the authority of the Khans, though only when the Khans themselves are implicated in the charge. In times of crisis, legal provisions also allow for the Lawmaster to take the place of a Khan in the event of incapacity, death or censure. As a result, many ambitious warriors view the post of Lawmaster as a stepping stone to becoming a Khan themselves. Martial Code this is a collection of rules and laws that govern clan actions in times of war. Its primary goal is to minimise the political prevarication that often accompanies Grand Council meetings, forcing the participants to keep the matter at hand and to carry out business with a minimum of delay. When in effect, it also grants the Ilkhan extraordinary power, such as the right to dismiss any charges brought before the clan or Grand Councils that he or she deems frivolous. Master Codex this comprises the master files of the clan breeding program, which maps the DNA and genealogy of every trueborn warrior, alive and dead. Melee. It's a free-for-all battle, offering no targeting restrictions and ignoring the rules of Zelbregen. Any trial may become a melee if a participant violates Zelbregen by firing on a target already engaged in combat with another participant. The battle to determine the 32nd place in a trial of blood right is also called a grand melee. Oathmaster. These serve as the honour guard for any official ceremony. He or she administers all oaths taken at the ceremony and is traditionally the oldest and most experienced blood name warrior at the gathering. Of Khan is a term of respect for someone of higher rank. Trial of Position There are two forms of the trial of position. The first is known as the blooding, which determines if a warrior candidate is qualified to take his or her place as a member of the warrior caste. Failure here results in demotion to a civilian caste. Success, defeating one or more opponent, determines both status and rank. The second form of trial of position, known as the testing, is held periodically, and determines whether a warrior is qualified to maintain his or her rank. Those who perform as, as expected against targets based on role, rank and age maintain this rank, while those who perform better than expected test up are promoted. Those who perform more poorly than expected test down and are demoted. A non-officer, mech warrior, pilot or elemental who tests down is relegated to a non-combat role, or is transferred to the civilian caste. Trial of Possession A trial of possession resolves disputes between two parties over ownership or control. This can include equipment, territory, and even genetic material. The traditional bachal forms the core of the trial in order to encourage the participants to resolve it with minimal use of force. Powerless, the vulnerability of a warrior forced to fight without his or her customary weapons. These are known as powerless. Propagation. Propagation is the ritual of increasing the blood count associated with a particular name. A blood count reduced by reaving may be increased on the advice of the scientist cast and after a vote of the council. This motion may be opposed by a trial of refusal known as a trial of propagation, but no penalty attaches to either the aggressor or defender in such case. Quiaf, quineg. These are the grammatical constructs associated with rhetorical questions. They're formalised versions of language structures used with spoken language, intended to remove any ambiguity. When the speaker expects a negative, he or she ends the sentence with quineg, and when expecting a positive, they answer with quiaf. Ransom. Clan custom dictates that a warrior who has been successful in his first trial position may be rewarded with a gift. The gift depends on the degree of success in the trial, ranging from a personal weapon to a mech or unit command. This gift is known as a ransom. In exceptional circumstances, a ransom may be given for tr later trials of position, such as Natasha Kerensky's retesting after her return to the clans, in which she was awarded the right to form the 13th Wolf Guards. Reaving. This is the ritual of reducing the blood count associated with a particular blood name. 
Originally established to mitigate the impact of poorly performing blood names, over time it's become a political tool used to control the number of warriors from a single named house, and therefore votes. In clan councils, a reaving is called by a blood name house rather than a clan against a blood name house that has announced a trial of blood right. The Grand Council debates the merits of the name, and the matter is traditionally resolved by a trial of refusal, known as the trial of reaving. Based on the results of the vote, if the pro-reaving force wins, the targeted blood name's blood count is reduced by one, and if the trial of blood right is cancelled, if the defending force wins then, the trial of blood right takes place as scheduled, and that name's house can then call for the reaving suffer's actions. A reed. This is an honour-bound oath, usually administered by a clan council. Anyone breaking this is severely punished, commonly by execution. Trial of refusal. Any decision made by a clan council or the grand council may be challenged by a member of this body. The trial of refusal epitomises the clan belief that might makes right, with the victor of the trial being regarded as in the right. The odds of the battle are determined on a prorated basis, with the forces of the two sides matched according to the ratio of winning and losing votes. The challenger announces what forces they will use, and the defender can field forces proportionate to their margin of success in the vote. For example, a trial of refusal against a decision that passed 5 to 1 could give the defending force five times the size of that used by the challenger. In practice, the result of bidding among those wishing to defend the decision usually shifts the odds in favour of the challenger. The Remembrance the Remembrance is an ongoing heroic saga that describes clan history from the time of the Exodus to the present day. Each clan maintains its own version, reflecting its opinions and perceptions of events. Inclusion in the Remembrance is one of the highest honours possible for a member of the clans. All clan warriors can recite passages from the Remembrance from memory, and written copies of the book are among the few non-technical books allowed in clan society. These books are usually lavishly illustrated in a fashion similar to the illuminated manuscripts and bibles of the medieval period. Warriors frequently paint passages of the remembrance on the sides of their omnimex, fighters, and battle armour. Rai Star. A gifted warrior on his way to a high position in the clan is referred to as a Rai Star, literally meaning rising star. Safcon. This is a clan ritual that allows troops to land on a world unmolested in advance of a trial. In the absence of SAFCON, the incoming dropships, jumpships and warships are open to attack. Even in those cases when clan ships aren't approaching a world to engage in a trial, the inbound vessels may broadcast a beam of neutrality, a message indicating non-hostile intent, when they are attempting to make planet fall, avoiding hostile actions from the occupying troops. Satara. This is a veto used in clan councils to settle or postpone disputes within or between castes. Traditionally, the councils invoke Satara only when negotiations have reached an impasse, or the dispute threatens the ability of the clan to function as it should. Savashri is a clan epithet. Sela is a ritual response in clan ceremonies. The origin of this phrase is unknown, though it may come from the biblical notation Sela, thought to be a musical notation or a reference to contemplation. Sibko a group of trueborn warrior caste children raised and training together is known as the Sibco. In many clans, Sibcos are produced from the same gene parents and thus are literally siblings. A few clans, most notably Wolf, create Sibcos from members of a number of blood name houses and subcasts. Such groups tend to be smaller, around 20 individuals rather than the 100 or so in gene parent based Sibcos. With more emphasis given to cooperation here, both types of Sibco, usually only 4 or 5 of them, will pass their initial trial of position. Sibkin, this is a term for the members of the same Sibco. Sibbies is a derogatory name used within Clan Jade Falcon for those members of Sibcos who underwent accelerated training and whose trial of position consisted of the Coventry campaign. This term is also used as a derogatory epithet to imply poor training or a young, inexperienced warrior of any kind. Salama. Clan warriors considered too old to serve in mainstream units are assigned to Salama units. The members of such units generally seek suicide missions in order to die in combat, but instead are usually forced to, uh, to serve as garrison troops. Stravag, a clan epithet, probably a corruption of Stran, meaning independent, and Vagon, meaning birthing. Serkai, it's the right of forgiveness. When two parties disagree, or when one offends the other, clan society expects the opponents to undergo Serkai. As a matter of honour, the offending party admits their wrongdoing and requests punishment. The clan views those who do not request Serkai as a divisive influence and finds another way to deal with such members. 
actions too severe to be excused by Sir Kai result in a trial of grievance. Sir Kai Reed. Sir Kai Reed, or the Reed of Forgiveness, is the honour-bound oath associated with Sir Kai. It binds the two parties and ensures that the offender suffers no further disgrace from the offence once he or she accepts punishment. Surat, a clan epithet alluding to the rodent of the same name that, dis, uh, that disperges an individual's genetic heritage. As such, it's one of the most vulgar and offensive epithets amongst the clans. Test down, referring to the demotional warriors who do not perform as well as expected in their trial of position to maintain or advance rank. Talman. The fighting arm of a clan is known as a Talman. Trothkin. Used formally, Trothkin refers to members of an extended Sibco. It's more commonly used to denote members of a gathering, and warriors also frequently use it when addressing someone they consider a peer. Trueborn or True Birth. A warrior born of the clan's artificial breeding program is known as a Trueborn. In less formal situations, the clans use the term True Birth. Veneers. Members of some clans, most notably Novacats, collect keepsakes of their battles. These items are called veneers, probably derived from the word souvenirs. Warden. A warden is a clansman who believes that the clans were established to guard the Inner Sphere from outside threat, rather than conquer it and re-establish the Star League by force. Most wardens were therefore opposed to the recent invasion of the Inner Sphere. Zelbregen. This is the body of rules governing dueling. These rules in dictates that such actions are one-on-one -on -one engagements, and that any warriors not immediately challenged should stay out of the battle until an opponent is free. Once a clan warrior engages a foe, no other warriors on his side may target them, even if it means allowing the death of the clan warrior. Interfering in a duel by attacking a foe who's already engaging constitutes a major breach of honour, usually resulting in loss of rank, and also opens the battle to a melee.